Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, we're boy Nev from Nev's Tech Bits, and today we're going to check out the AC750. Uh, this is the DIR819 unit. Now, I bought this thing, I brought it home, and I realized pretty quickly that I already have an AC750 unit. Except, what's this? It's smaller, and it only has uh, two antennas. What's going on here? So once again, you got to keep an eye on the model number at the bottom right here. This one is DIR819, and this older one is DIR816L. That's a pretty confusing naming uh, conventions, and I'm still struggling to find out why they've done it this way, but it's D-Link, so does anyone really care? Anyone? Let's just get into this. Awesome, awesome. we got some cardboard recyclable packaging here. A little alert telling you if you're too dumb to figure out how to set this up, don't return it, just go to this address. And of course we got the power and the ethernet. Interestingly enough on this one, this sticker at the top left is actually part of the uh, protective sleeve on top here. And the finish on the unit is very reflective and I definitely didn't like that because of course it can be scratched and it was scratched very quickly by almost nothing at all. So over here on the left we have the smaller AC750, on the right we have the newer one. A bit of a size difference, we get uh, two antenna of course. Now I think the big deal about antenna isn't how fast or how far it can send a message, it's how many things you can connect to at the same time. An antenna can only talk to one thing at a time, but it does it very quickly, rapid fire. Now this review is going to be all about the unit on the right, the 819. I'm just showing you the smaller one just so you know that uh, not all AC750s are the same. Once you get it out of the box, get her plugged in. Get her turned on. You want the internet to come into this yellow connector. If you want high speed, if you want higher speed than Wi-Fi, plug in directly. Trust me, it's always better. Except uh, if you're using AC and you're really freaking close. But the only problem with AC is that it doesn't work for very long. It doesn't go for very far. <clears throat> and there's a lot that it, it can interrupt it. Plate glass window, like anything can interrupt it. The reason why we switched up from 2.5 2 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz is because everything operates at 2.4 gigahertz your microwave your cell phone or not your cell phone your cordless phone operates at that speed so they wanted to get something that a lot of people didn't have but geez these days everyone has that too and you know what probably nobody has cordless phones anymore because who has landlines other than me by this point i'd recommend you disconnect your unit from wi-fi and plug this router directly in to the back next you're going to need to go to 192.168.0.1 i believe we'll see that in a sec so remember internet goes into yellow and then plug directly into your computer through here through one of the black connections that's pretty much a universal thing with routers all right now because i plugged this thing into the network before i plugged the unit directly into the laptop it took its own ip number that wasn't conflicting with uh, the unit that i had so it decided to make this router 192.168.100.1 if i had not plugged it into the network first then it would have been 192.168.0.1 i believe uh, but since the default gateway i believe was already in use by the router that I have, my primary router, it automatically switched over, which is good because it could cause a big conflict if it did not. So I got everything hooked up right now. I went uh, to the website, or not the website, but I went to the IP number. The way that I found the IP number I, that I had to go to is I was pinging it. Where is it? Where is it? Right here, I was pinging it, 192.168.0.1. I wasn't getting anything, but I was getting a reply from 192.168.100.1 uh, saying that that was unreachable. So that's how I figured out that 192.168.100.1 is what I was supposed to be looking for. And here I am. So here we can take the guided setup through we'll uh, just hit next the router detected your internet connection please wait so we're just going to take a sec for it to uh, check all the settings automatically link itself up with what i got and then we will hopefully be good to go on to the next step easy peasy lemon squeezy there it is 
So that took about another two minutes. The next screen that it's going to take you to is where you can name uh, your Wi-Fi. So remember, you got two bands, 2.4 gigahertz, and then uh, the 5 gigahertz band. So I decided to swap the name to uh, the brand model. And then for the password, I'm just going to make something very topical. Today, one, two, three. Very easy. Then I'm going to hit next. By default, the new D-Link router does not have a password. Now, you always want to put a password on these things. And the reason why is because you use a default and hackers can automatically use your default to get in without any problem. And I'm pretty sure they can use brute force attacks on these things. So you want the password to be pretty good. But since I'm just doing this for testing, I'm not even going to put a password in. But I definitely recommend you put a password in. Now, what this password is, is... It's going to be for if you go to this address and try to get into the router, you need to have a password. Most people don't use them. I would definitely recommend using a password. Administrator cannot be empty. Ah, dang it. Okay, today one, two, three. Minus five. If you're in New York or if you are in Toronto, Ottawa, that's the time you got. Day one, two, three. Yep, that's right. Just to verify. And then it will set up. And after about a minute, it'll bring you here. Basically, quick little soft reboot. And I'll put on my password to day one, two, three. And we're back in. This thing's set up. And I got the Wi Fi. Yeah, it's going. Alright, so next up, let's have a look at the Wi-Fi spectrum on Wi-Fi Analyzer. You can see your fault, which is a standard Wi-Fi network that I like to use, is on the far left. And then right next to it, the DIR819 AC750 2.4. I am right next to that. I am right up against it. And I'm going to be doing speed tests on this. I'm going to be putting the phone directly on to the router so I can get the best possible uh, reading. Right now, I'm connected to your fault, and I'm not liking how the DIR819 that I just made is conflicting with it. It's also conflicting with Nacho. Nacho just popped up just recently. Uh, what you want to see within these bands is you want to see arches that rise and fall right next to each other beautifully. You don't want to see the arches conflicting with each other. Like your fault is using channel 0 to 3 and it looks like the new one that I made is on 0.5 to uh, channel 8. Um, the more channels you use, the faster it'll go, apparently. But I don't like that. That's, that's a general no-no. I've ran much worse and everything is still work, but you just don't like to see it, that's for sure. And let's check out the 5 gigahertz channel. Your fault is operating at 5. And then here we have the one that I just made, the DIR819 uh, 5 gigahertz. And my neighbor and I are both sharing that one, so it should be good. Next up, let's go over to the Speed Test Pro. I love the Speed Test Pro. With the Speed Test Pro, you can test just the Wi Fi, just the Wi Fi, not the internet speed, or you can test both. So let's give the Wi Fi a shot. My family's all left. I've turned all the Wi Fi stuff off, and let's give her a shot. So the test finished with only 52.17 megabits per second. This thing's standing up, upstairs above me, probably about 10 feet. But what's really strange is I can get a much better signal than that. I have gotten a 300 megabits signal. It's kind of confusing why it would be so low. I almost wonder if it's because of this D-Link Wi-Fi. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's test the D-Link next. The D-Link 2.4. D-Link 2.4 is getting almost 78 megabits. Now remember, a megabit is one-eighth of a megabyte. At the, the top, the second line down, the minus 22 basically, uh, you want that to be at zero. The further away you get, the more minus you get. Next up. Let's try the 5 gigahertz band. And we're definitely getting higher, definitely getting more speed on that. 
but I am really curious how come it's not as good as it normally is. I've run this test multiple times. Normally I can get 500 megabits, or sorry, not 500, but 300, just, just over 300, 330 is what I can normally get, but for some reason it's not even getting up that high. Now if I look over at the D-Link box, I should be able to get 300 megabits per second on the 2.4 and 433 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz. The only thing that might be stopping me from getting this is the Snapdragon chip inside my phone. This is an LG G8 and it has a Snapdragon 821 and I'm supposed to be able to get a maximum of 867 megabits per second but it is what it is i'm going to give it another test in a little bit and see if it'll change anything but those numbers aren't horrible they're not particularly good either i'm just going to run this one one more time nothing's ever there we go there we go nothing's ever easy or free when it comes to networking that's for sure now that's what i'm more interested in seeing but it's a little interesting because i'm at five gigahertz and i'm still not even getting um I'm still not even getting 400 megabits. So let's just test the network on this 5 gigahertz. Okay, so 86 down and 10 up. I can definitely get more than that on an afternoon. Maybe it's just that time of day. I should say it is 1.14 p.m. And that can definitely affect, because peak usage is usually around lunchtime, right? All right, let's get on to my standard and run that network speed test see if it's any better nope a little bit slower interesting interesting of course nothing on my channel is done unless i've done a proper teardown of it I'm not sure what this piece is, the long bar. If anybody knows, please let me know. And then of course we got what's on the flip side. Yeah, I know, I should be using a tripod for this, but... Next up, let's do a range test. AC750 old school, AC750 amplify, AC1200. Let's go out to the back 40 and see exactly how far we can get with this stuff. As you can see, having these all on at the same time really messes up the spectrum, so I'm going to get this done as quickly as I can. I should mention that after I got this done, I didn't get any complaints from the neighbors, and I did warn them about what was going on. Seriously though, not bad, all things considered. And that's where the routers are. Just to show you it's a great day. And that's the uh, halfway marker between uh, the end of the block or the end of the field, I should say. But that's it for me. Now from that stack, but like and subscribe if you like this stuff. Always appreciate it, and uh, have a good one, folks.